This is a News Channel 2 town hall meeting, the sewer solvent scandal. Welcome back, everyone. We're told our phones are ringing off the hook. We want to get to each and as many of the calls as we can in just a moment, so please be patient with us. Stay in there. Prosecutors say they've traced the bribery, theft, and corruption in the Cedar Rapids city government back to 1986. But you know, the first allegations of wrongdoing surfaced just a year and a half ago. Why did it take so long, about six years, for someone in city government to spot wrongdoing? And then the question comes up, why did the corruption continue for more than a year until our News Channel 2 I-Team report forced city government to listen. We'll ask those, the city council those questions. We'll take your phone calls in just a moment. But now uh, let's meet the woman who first blew the whistle. And Sandy, I know you spoke exclu exclusively with this woman last week. Tell us again who she is and what she had to say. Amy, the, the whistleblower was then city payroll clerk Beverly Van Horn. When Beverly discovered the corruption a year and a half ago, she says she took her concerns to then streets commissioner Wayne Murdoch and her boss, current city auditor Bob McMahon. When nothing came of that, Beverly says she turned to government watchdog Carol Martin, who came to us. Throughout the scandal, Beverly stayed behind the scenes until last week. That's when she told her story to News Channel 2. For 32 years, Beverly Van Horn worked as a payroll clerk in Cedar Rapids City Auditor's Office. She knew firsthand what money the city paid out and where it went. Van Horn says something appeared terribly wrong about a year and a half ago. She smelled a rat in the city's dealings with Steve Golden and Intertrade Chemical. Why did you become suspicious in the first place? We had some employees come in to pick up their last checks and they told me how this solvent was being dumped just so they could reorder and they, they said that they understood that that bothered me. And so after they left, I t told my boss about it. And all he said was, well, that he thought Golden was a slick one and it just stopped there. So then I finally got to Carol Martin and we worked together and she came to you. Van Horn says besides going to her boss, City Auditor Bob McMahon, she took her concerns about inner trade to then Streets Commissioner Wayne Murdoch a year and a half ago. Van Horn says she just couldn't believe the money the city was spending with Intertrade Chemical. In fact, for 32 years you never saw payments like that going out to any other no, company. I no, I didn't. I have not. And I was in accounts payable for a long time where I could watch things. Though Beverly has now left the city, she says she feels good about blowing the whistle and would encourage anyone else with information to do the same. Just do what you think is right. I mean, to me, I feel good about it. I know it was right. This is amazing. We're all here tonight because one woman had the guts to speak up and actually do something about it and put an end to all of this and give us the report so that we could tell other people about it. Do you have to be a city employee, though, to step in and do something like she did? Well, we should all know that. Absolutely not. Yeah. I mean, this is a clear example of that. Um, Carol Martin is a good example of that. Uh, she's not afraid to ask questions. She's not afraid to dig and, and to look into things. And the point here is that just one person can make a big difference. You could be the next person that does that. Amy? Uh, as I said earlier, our phone lines are jammed right now. If you'd like to make that call, please still try. Our number is 395-7686. We want to go right to the phones and answer your questions. Go ahead. You're live on the air on News Channel 2. What is your question? Yes, I'd like to know when Carol Martin comes in and asks city employees questions, uh, there, it has been known that these city employees get reprimanded. And, I mean, are there other things that are getting covered up? Good question. She yes. says if, if, she, if you come in with a complaint, you're going to get reprimanded. No. No. That's not the case, well. Amy. Uh, I'm not sure what the uh, caller is making reference to, but uh, this all city records, well, all permitted city records, certain records are uh, uh, subject to privacy laws, uh, civil rights, litigation, such cases as that. But otherwise, Information is available, and city employees are uh, under instructions to provide it on a timely basis. They're not required so, to drop everything. So you want people to come in doing. and give you this information if they have it? You, yes. You beg for it. Absolutely. Very not. good. Another caller, please. Your question. Okay. What I was uh, noticed today in the paper was that the two fired employees were not going to get the fifteen thousand and five thousand dollar. Uh, retirement benefits or whatever. Now, are they still going to get re paid retirement or not? 
are they going to get any benefits of any kind that you know Mayor Servicek? Um, the uh, IPER system that city employees operate under is independent of the city. We don't have control over that. So um, that part is, is not anything the city council has action over. Uh, the uh, specifics of the action that the city council took yesterday regarding the other benefits, sick leave, vacation, um, and pay, um, are confidential as a result of a private meeting that the city council had to discuss that. But um, uh, the article is essentially correct. It was in the newspaper. J.D., how do you feel? Many people out there would say uh, these two men uh, allegedly are crooks. They don't deserve the benefits. Uh, do you think it's the right decision? I think we made the right decision, and uh, the court uh, system is now uh, taking care of the situation as far as these gentlemen are concerned. I think city council needs to look at the management end of it uh, uh, on what went on and uh, tighten those things up. Does this whole scandal bring into question the form of government that we have, the commission government? Is this thing outdated? Are we having the wrong kind of government? We, do we have enough checks and balances? I, I, I would have to say that the form of government doesn't have anything to do with it. It happens in all forms. For over 20 years I worked as a DCI agent. I can tell you that I worked in other communities in the state of Iowa that had the same kind of situations with different forms of government. Look around the country, you see it. And one of your callers earlier said, how does it happen in the city and it doesn't happen anywhere else? I suggest that, uh, yes, it, it happened in the city. It's very unfortunate, but go back and read your news accounts this past year. There are two major companies here in Cedar Rapids that had the very same type of things happen to them by very high officials. Okay. Okay. Uh, so. We're not the only ones. Okay, J.D., we've got to go ahead and get our calls in before the end of the show. Go ahead. You're live on the air. Yeah, I'd like to know who makes up uh, all the schedules to say how much manpower goes and does each job. Because it seems like they got a lot of wasted manpower standing around doing nothing, uh, uh, such as they have four workers and one wor one person doing the job and three watching. Uh, is it necessary to have three supervisors at a time, or is this a fair comparison? It seems like anytime you talk about city workers, they're saying that there's uh, six people doing the job of one person. Uh, is this a fair comparison that he's giving right now? Well, I, I think the schedules are made up to uh, take care of the projects that are that are done by the quadrant foreman in each of the quadrants and uh, sometimes uh, there, there needs to be a foreman there, sometimes there's an inspector there. Uh, they each have different qualifications. Uh, the union has certain things that uh, allows people to do and uh, they, it's because of that that we have uh, a need sometimes for what it looks like more people and there should be. But uh, everybody's supposed to be working and doing the job that they're supposed to be doing and they're not supposed to be standing around. All right, we have another uh, question from a viewer. We went out uh, with our cameras today, and uh, here's that question. My name is Penny Merstick, and my question is, will there, because of the corruption, will there be any restructuring in the city because of what's happened about this? That's a very good question. Will there be any restructuring in the city? I imagine the sum has already taken place. Uh, oh, gentlemen? I can take that. Don? Um, I, I believe we've touched on it all, already, that the restructuring is underway at... Uh, it started uh, almost immediately after we knew what was going on and, and th there was an investigation underway. We decided to get uh, purchasing practices in line and change them from the way they were. And now more recent, and the consultant has totally adopted those purchasing practices. And now we more recently are, are looking at the uh, receiving practices to get in line with the state auditor's request to uh, do a better job with those things. So. All right. We have another caller. Uh, could we have that question, please? Uh, hello. Um, I have a question about the city employees uh, that were not management and have not been involved or proven in stealing and all that and who feel sort of betrayed by this whole thing uh, that management has done. Uh, my question is, what is being done for these employees who are honest, hardworking employees and who are really hurting over this and who are being ask uh, you know if they got their sewer solvent payment today when they're when they're going out and collecting garbage and stuff like that yeah. some of the public is harassing these city employees what's being done to help these right. any assistance programs for those and this is a very important question because uh, not only are there a lot of city workers who say they're hurting but what can be done to change the perception Guilt, of city, by Rapids, city, sure. city government yes I would like to ask the community that's watching today that to understand that this is a serious issue. Um, everybody who works for the city feels the pain of what happened and 
does a good job of what they do. This was a management problem isolated to a few individuals. And what I'd ask the community to do is not joke about what happened here because the people that they joke with take it pretty personally. Absolutely. And we've been in a number of meetings with those employees and found out about some of the horror stories of what people have said in the community. So I guess I would ask the community, please understand uh, this is not a joking matter for any of us or any city employee, and please respect that and, and don't um, tell unfair jokes to, to anyone. Because and if anybody has a problem dealing with this, they should come to their department heads and managers and say, hey, help me out here. How, tell me how I can deal with this, right? That's right. right. All right, very good. We're going to take a break. We'll be back with some more phone calls in just a moment. Please, please do with us.